Immortality is the ultimate quest of this civilization. In the process of exploring immortality, the established religion, mythology, philosophy, medicine, astronomy, and so on. Five hundred years ago, a man mantled all this into one story. That novel is Journey to the West. Monkey King Sun Wukong is one of the main characters of this novel. Based on the original text, the Monkey King was born around 600 BC. Where was he born? In the East Continent. What's his place? The map sitting here comes from the Buddhist scripture, Qi Shi Jing. This is a book about the universe's formation, development, organization, and demise. According to Buddha, our human world is divided into four regions. The sun and all four regions revolve around the place called Xu Mi Shan. Modern astronomy tells us that the sun. Orbits around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. In ancient Chinese astronomy, the center was called Yellow Pole. Thus, these four regions also revolve around the Yellow Pole. And interestingly, the Milky Way has four spiral arms. So, Chinese way speculates that the four regions described by Buddha. Might be four planets. They are located on the four spiral arms of the Milky Way. The author of Journey to the West describes these four regions as four continents. They scattered across the ocean, like what we know today as the continent of the Eurasia, Africa, the Americas, and Australia. The writer said. Wu Kong's birthplace is the East Continent. This idea is probably wrong, because according to Buddha, humans like us live in the Southern region. The other three regions have completely different natural environment and human forms. For example, in the Northern region, humans' pregnancy lasts only seven days. And their hair is blue. The scenery is very beautiful. There are colorful, sparkling rocks everywhere. People live under tree, without leading to labor for production, as trees provide food, lighting, and music. This region sounds like a Pandora from the movie Avatar. So Chinese way speculates that the Buddha's four regions. Refer to four planets, not four pieces of land in an ocean on Earth. Our Earth is located on the Orion arm of the Milky Way, while the Wukong's birthplace, the East Continent, should be on a planet in the Pisces arms of the Milky Way. But if that were true, journey to the West. Would become more of Star Trek or Star Wars, and the story couldn't proceed. So, we'll stick to the author setting for the story. The world is an ocean with four continents. In the direction of east, south, west, and north. On the east continent near the sea, there is a country called Ao Lai. Within Ao Lai country. There is a mountain by the sea called Hua Guo Mountain. Hua Guo means flowers and fruit, so you can imagine what kind of mountain this is. At the top of Hua Guo Mountain lies a big rock. The rock absorbs Yin Qi and Yang Qi from heaven and earth, and then become pregnant. In Chinese culture. Qi is the fundamental force of the universe that drives world and life. Qi is divided into Yin Qi and Yang Qi. Yin 
and yang represent two basic states of matter and energy. For instance, yin means female and yang means male. Yin represents the earth and yang represents the sky. Yin stands for negative and yang for positive. Yin denotes minus and yang plus, and so on. The yin qi and yang qi with in the rock combine, and then the rock become pregnant. One day, the rock cracks open, and out rolls a stone egg. When the stone egg encounters wind, it transforms into a monkey. This is verse three chorus of Sun Wukong. But why does this stone egg lead to meet wind to become a monkey? Buddha says that there are four great elements that make up the world and life. They are earth, water, fire, and wind. Here, wind represents movement, dynamics, breathing, and uh, circulations, and so on. So when the stone egg encounters wind, it becomes alive, just like a baby's first cry after birth. The first cry is the beginning of breath. At this time, the monkey king didn't have a limb yet. In the original text, he was simply called stone monkey. When the stone monkey was born, his eyes shoot out two beams of golden light. Straight into the sky, alarming the heaven. In previous video, seventeen concepts in Chinese mythology, I mentioned that the heaven is a ring, composed of gods and immortals, and the Jade Emperor is the highest leader. The Jade Emperor ordered Chen Liyan and Shun Feng Er to investigate. These two guys are responsible for gathering intelligence for the heaven, just like the CIA. Their limb means sound mile eye, and ears that hears with the wind. After hearing the report from these two guys, the Jade Emperor didn't think much of it. He considered it as a natural phenomenon and nothing unusual. He never imagined that the monkey would one day try to take his imperial throne. After a stone monkey was born, he lived with a group of monkey, playing freely every day in the beautiful Huagua Mountain. One hot day, and the monkey were bathing in a stream. Someone suggested finding out where the stream originated. Then they followed it upstream, and finally discovered a waterfall. Behind the waterfall seems like a cave. A monkey proposed that if anyone had the skill to jump behind the waterfall, he could be their king. Stun monkey bravely jumped into the waterfall. Inside, he discovered an iron bridge hidden behind the waterfall. Leading to a cave, carved on a stone, and the cave entrance were the words, "Water Curtain Cave." Of course, those are Chinese characters, not English. This cave has a lot of space and can hold hundreds of people, with trees, grass, flowers, stone stoves, stone pots, stone beds, stone stools, and more. Stone monkey led the monkeys inside, giving them shelter from wind and rain. The water curtain cave became their joyful home. Stone monkey ascended the throne as their king. He took a new name, the handsome monkey king. From then on, the handsome monkey king and his monkeys would play in Huagua Mountain during the day. And stay in water curtain cave at night, living a rich and comfortable life. One day during a feast, the monkey king suddenly felt sad, and started to cry. The monkeys didn't know what's going on. They were living in such nice place, with beautiful scenery, abundant resources. 
They are free from the rules of human kings, and they are not threatened by natural disasters and fierce animals. The monkeys ask him, "With such a perfect life, what are you unhappy about? What more could you want?" The monkey king replied, "Although we are not bound by human laws and threatened by wild beasts, we will eventually die, and our current life will ultimately vanish. In the end, we will fall under the control of Yan Wang." Here, Yan Wang, I explained it in previous video. He is the CEO of the underworld. Governing both human and animals after death. At this moment, the monkey king's mental state is the same as that of the high officials and nobles in the world. Ordinary people strive hard to gain higher status and more wealth, but once they get them, what do they feel? What do kings, emperors, nobles, and rich people feel? The feeling is fear of death. So, why do many celebrities and rich people invest in medical science, bioengineering, genetic engineering, and digital life research? That's because of the fear of death. Death is equal, no matter who you are, how much you possess. Death takes everything away. Returning everyone to equality. The rich and powerful people hate equality. They hope to live forever through organ transplantation, cloning, digital life, and so on. This way, they can always stand above everyone else. Let's go back to the story. Hearing what the monkey king said, an old monkey stepped forward. He was the monkey king's chancellor. And very knowledgeable, he said, "Great king, having such thought means your heart seeks the Tao. It's time for you to pursue the Tao." Here, an important Chinese word arises, Tao. You should have heard of the native Chinese religion, Taoism. Tao means the origin of the universe, the thing that was there. Before the universe was born, the monkey suggests the monkey king now seeks to understand the ultimate truth of the universe. The old monkey continued, "In this world, there are only three kinds, not under Yan Wang's control: Buddha, immortals, and gods. They are immortal and have the same lifespan as heaven and earth." Mountains and river, they jump out of the six paths of reincarnations. The concept of six paths of reincarnation comes from Buddhism. The lives in this world take six forms: heavenly being, asura, animal, human, hungry ghost, and hell being. After one life ends. It is reborn into another life form. Once the new life ends, it enters another form. Our lives are constantly shifting through the six forms. It's like a fly into a high-speed rotating electric fan that has to spin around inside forever. Excited by these words, Monkey King decided to leave Huaguo Mountain. To travel the world in search of Buddhas, immortals, and gods, he wanted to learn from them the way to Changsheng Bu Lao. The important Chinese word Changsheng Bu Lao appears here. Changsheng Bu Lao often gets translated as immortality, but immortality only means not dying. But Changsheng Bu Lao includes both not dying and not aging. If one only avoids death, but lies in bed with an oxygen tube and a diaper, that's not Changsheng Bu Lao. Changsheng Bu Lao is a very important concept in Chinese culture.
and uh, is the ultimate goal of Taoism. Many methods for achieving Changsheng Bu Lao have been passed down through history. For example, this book called Chan Tong Qi teaches people to cultivate to become immortal. If you can read Chinese, you can find ways to cultivate immortality in these ancient sacred books. The translated versions of this book are unreliable. The pursuit for Changsheng Bu Lao significantly influenced the historical event. For example, 2,000 years ago, China's Emperor Qin Shi Huang is famous for the terracotta warriors. He sent a chemist, Xu Fu, with 3,000 virgin men and women to search for a kind of medicine to make him immortal. The 3,001 people went out to the sea and never came back. This group of people are believed to be the ancestors of many Japanese today. Let's get back to the story. The monkey king ordered his monkeys to build a raft. After a farewell party, the monkey king left Huago Mountain on the raft and he began his journey in search of immortality. But uh, this is not yet the journey to the West. Where did he go? Who did he meet? Did he find any Buddhas, immortals, or gods? Stay tuned for the next episode to find out. Follow Chinese Way, Nerd Chinese, The Chinese Way, The Penis Way. Mm-hmm.